more love, more joy, everything. It's inspired young people. Inspiration comes from within you. When you clear out the garbage that's in your mind, you then create space for something better, more beautiful to come in. Let's have life and have it more abundantly. I say yes. It's like taking a workshop. I get to be in my pajamas. We have a very active imagination, which is why it's important to learn how to harness it and then point it in the direction you want to go. I listen to your show every day. It's time now for Living Your Inspired Life with Susan Burrell. Susan is no-nonsense, inspirational, motivational, and fun. This is positive talk radio. Practical wisdom for everyday life. It's a gift you give yourself. Now, here's Susan. Hello, I'm Susan Burrell, and you're listening to Living Your Inspired Life on News Talk 1590 KVTA. And we are talking about all sorts of good stuff. If you missed last week's show, go to livingyourinspiredlife.org and get caught up in the shows. And we're also talking about some stuff that we have on our inspiration page, which you can click on at the top, or there's a little box at the bottom of the website, and you can click on and go and find out how to mind map. Last week we were talking about mind mapping because really the overall thing we're talking about is about how do you consciously want to end your year? Do you want to end it with a bluster and a fluster and a flurry? And I mean, some people like that, but, or do you want, well, I'm from California, so maybe you want to kind of just ease into that holiday and then New Year thing kind of laid back. So with me in the studio today is Todd Waddington. Hi, Todd. Oh, I am so, <laughs> hi, I'm so interested to find out how we're going to do that. Where we're going. Well, that whole hol- ease into the holiday oh. thing. Oh, well, the reason why I'm thinking about this is because uh, as soon as, well, before Thanksgiving, all the ads and all the Christmas decorations went up and I just mm-hmm. became incensed i was like are you kidding me i haven't even had turkey yet and now you want me to go become a shopaholic i'm not doing it well they they go up uh yeah thank the halloween well you know but when we were kids you didn't you didn't blur those lines there were seasons right there was halloween tick 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 thanksgiving tick, tick tick christmas you know, I mean, they didn't start playing Christmas music until the day after Thanksgiving, not a week before Thanksgiving. I know. It's it's frightening. So, and, and so what that caused me to start thinking about is, well, how do, I don't want to go at the speed of light anymore. Maybe it's just my ageism or something. But, you know, I just don't want to rush everywhere. And then it got me thinking about, well, then how do I want to end this year? What is it that I want to do? How do I want to create um, maybe new holiday rituals for myself that have meaning as opposed to running around at all the sales to get the best buy so I can go and wrap it up so somebody can shred the wrapping on Christmas Day and go, oh, gee, thanks. You know, how... So that's kind of what I've been contemplating. That's what I wanted to invite everybody that's listening. How do we, you, want to complete this year? And and when we, uh, what I talk about all the time on uh, Living Your Inspired Life, and we've had this conversation before, right, Todd, is, is is when you drop in, okay, drop in to listening to your inner voice or that, that inner instinct, then it's easier to find uh, creative ways to express yourself. It's easier to recognize that you're saying yes to way too many things. Hello, I'm raising mm-hmm. my hand. Way too many things. And, and unfortunately, I have the personality, I, my personality says yes to way too many things every day of the year, not just around the holidays, but every, every day of the year. So I, I'm looking at all this. How do we slow down? In the flurry of everything. Yeah, I, I I've got a, a list of a bunch of things in my head, and and you know it's it's all crammed in there. It, I have mm. an upside down home right now, which is, I, is a luxury problem. I'm not going to go there, but it but on top of that, it's the busiest time of year for my business. I have a special needs daughter, and right now, as I'm sitting here just unwinding, uh, <laughs> I feel <laughs> on the verge of tears. <laughs> it's like, I mean, it, maybe not literally, but I mean, yeah. it, I. I I uh, I have I, a feeling we're not alone. Yeah, I I really do. I I I, I had lunch with a friend yesterday, and literally we, we both sat down across from each other, and just kind of stared at the table, the air. The I mean, we didn't even 
we were both so tired and it hasn't even started yet. So I, I think we're not alone. That there, we as individuals, uh, and certainly in this culture, uh, the American culture, if you're not busy doing a bunch of stuff, including answering that, that tweet or that text as soon as it comes to your phone, then you're not American. Then you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Mm. What you know? Yeah. Is there I do some know. place? There's got to be some places. I know there's some places. In well, I live in one that tends to slow down in the Ojai Valley. You know, lots of people want to just be slow, and I know that there's got to be places like that in other parts of the country. And yet, it's hard not to amplify all the doingness. Yeah, well, somebody t- turned to me once. I was caring for my daughter, and they said, wow, you're really an anxious person, or you're really anxious, or something. And in my <laughs> mind, in my mind, it was like, no, this is what I need to do to take care of my daughter. And in some respect, I'm sure that's true. But boy, it really pushed a button inside of me. Like, you know, And I think the reason it did is because perhaps there is another way to do it. Yeah, yeah. And what I'm finding, like this morning, I took time. I got... I just became really slow and and um, intentional, which we're going to be talking about, uh, and becoming slow and intentional. I got more things done with less frenzy and uh, stress. And a- as I was driving to the station, I was like, "Wow, I just like ticked off five different things on my list that I needed to get done, business things, you know." And it felt good, and I wasn't stressed driving here I wasn't upset that I hadn't returned those calls or what because I I slowed down enough to be intentional to get it done Mm. yeah so so what so and what what I'm talking about all right I want to read a quote and this is from a book called the five gifts for abundant living by Diane Harmony and and she says by focusing your intention rather than the barriers your ego perceives to be standing in your way you are keeping yourself open to the field of all possibilities for bringing about your desired outcome. Did you get that? Let me mm-hmm. say it again. Mm-hmm. Kind of like the Abraham stuff. Right. A bit. Yeah. Which I got a quote from them for later. By focusing on your intention instead of focusing on those um, ego things that we think are in the way, you know, like, well, well, that person didn't return my call, so I can't get this done. Or, or you know, why didn't, why didn't, you know, my child do the thing I said they would do, like clean their room? Instead of focusing on those things that we think are that we perceive as standing in our way, we keep ourselves open to the, that field of possibility for bringing out the desired income. So uh, outcome, well, and income, the outcome and the income. So what's that, so so what that says to me is when we are intentional, like today, I'm going to be mindful about how I proceed in life. Today, just do it one day at a time. Then we can begin to see what the other possibilities are out there for ourselves that we want to participate in or we want to say yes i want to do that or or i want i want that to be my focus for the next day or the next year and so when we when we set intentions we it helps us to figure out what we focus on and what happens oftentimes is that people want to have a game plan so badly uh, uh, here's how I'm going to get from point A to point B plan that they don't realize that they're um, subverting themselves. They're, they're um, sabotaging the possibility of a better outcome than they can imagine. I get that. I get that. You know, it's challenging for me to hold an intention when life is crazy you know, when life is, you know, and because I think the people that really do well in life are those that can set an intention, exactly what you're saying. Yeah. And still walk through the daily, some of the drudgery, the tragedy, the, the big events that happen, yet still holding that intention of, let's just say my intention is I am joy today. I'm uh-huh. going to be joyous no matter what happens. And, you know, I, I, like well that that all went out the window when uh, my daughter didn't get her homework done and there was a fit and you know whatever the scenario is yeah and then and then I feel like I undermine myself by saying oh well that didn't work out you know and right so then so you it's just sort throw of short the- term intention it doesn't so right. I think that to so I guess my question then perhaps I guess it's the form of a question is how do we maintain that if I'm going to set this intention 
regardless of like what's happening in my life or what the circumstances are. Because that, I think that's how I know that in theory that works. In theory it works. So let's talk about that. Let me think about that. Um, Hmm. Because I get tripped up often, too. That's why that quote appealed to me that, we're, you know, the, the, what the ego perceives as something in your way, you know, so so like your example of your daughter didn't get her homework done it, that when we get triggered by those things. OK, when I get triggered by those things, it is generally because I had an expectation of how things were going to be. If she gets her homework done, I'm going to be happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, well, and me, everything else is going to flow because we'll be on schedule. And what I need to add to that is it's not so much about me. I mean, I'm, my needs are pretty easygoing when it comes to that, but it's her reaction to mm -hmm. whatever it is. Homework done, not mm -hmm. done. She'll, she's an explosive child. And it's kind of like, so anyway, that's just one example. Right. So w I was having a conversation with some people the other night about something very similar to this because, um, what happens, th and there's a difference between having an intention, it's a, so there, not a difference. Part of setting the intention is then allowing um, a larger space to surround it, you know, like setting the intention and then let it go. It's like planting a seed in the soil, right? When, when you plant a, a seed in your garden, you don't then keep going back and digging it up to see if it's growing. You, you leave it alone. Right. But part of that is you create space around that plant to grow. So you, you clean out the weeds and things like that. And you have to go and and kind of check on it, not digging it up or anything. But, oh, OK, is there an, did they get did it get enough sun? Is there water? Did it are there weeds? You know, what do I got to do to care for it? But then back off again. It's all it's it's like you have to be there's uh, that old phrase of being hands-on you know I'm a hands-on parent or I'm a hands-on manager or whatever but I think what's happening now is uh, everyone's trying to navigate this new um, way of being in the world which is being being sort of hands-on but being hands-off enough so that whatever the, it is whether it's your pro a project at work you're working on instead of micromanaging it until it it shuts down that avenue of creativity and other people backing off enough, detaching enough so that there's space around that project or that idea so it can grow, if you will, organically. So what I notice, it, which is, sounds like what you were just describing, Todd, what I notice is I set, I set a, when my son was home, when he was living at home, because now he's in college, ha, huh, um, and my life is so much easier because, <laughs> and because I would get up, I would hit the floor running. Okay, he's got to get to school, which means I got to make the lunch. I got to make sure he has breakfast. I got to make sure he did his homework. I got to make sure, got to make sure. And then, and then, you know, when he's done with that, then I can start my day. And then, and then when he comes home, I got to make sure, got to make sure, you know, so it was somehow I developed this um, idea that in order to be a good parent, I had to be hands on and what I noticed is when he would go through these um, mental and emotional growth spurts, the last thing he wanted was me to be hands-on. And now that he's away at college when he comes home, if I even start with the, okay, so now what we're going to do, he's like, Mom, just relax. It's all going to work out. Whatever it is, it's all going to be okay. I'm like, oh, yeah, because when you weren't here, it was just fine. <laughs> Why is it a problem now that you're back home? Right. I don't know. So I think that it it's there is something and I haven't I haven't mastered it personally but what I'm observing is that there's a place when you set an intention to say okay I today is the day I choose to be joyful using your example and then let it alone enough so that when you're not being joyful it's not the thing you beat yourself up on you know what i mean right right if we're holding on to things so tightly like our intent if we're holding on to the way we think life is supposed to be we are not fluid enough our hands are not open to receive what life wants to give us that day or in that moment and when we think we have to hold on to the intent no no see i set the intention today to be joyful and look at me mm-hmm mm-hmm then, then all you're doing is getting more um, vehicles, more ammunition to beat yourself up, right? Right. And 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 those of us that are productive, we do have. I think it's true for most people. We have this idea that we've got to accomplish it. 
You know, I set the goal. I've got to accomplish it. So intentions are not goals. You know, my you don't say, okay, my goal today is to go through the day joyful. No, no, no. My intention is to be joyful. Therefore, I will be mindful of the times when I'm not and see if I can catch myself as soon as possible to remember that I was I have been choosing to be joyful today. How's that sound? Right. It sounds great. Does it sound like yeah. it's a doable thing? It does. And, you know, the, the other piece of this for me, and just me personally, and I'm sure other people listening, is that how's my practice, what I call my spiritual practice? Yeah. You know, am, am, am I doing other things to support joy in my life? And, re, you know, to be honest, I'm probably running on fumes You're right now. You're running on fumes, and which how, is why the tears would I are. Expect, how would I expect to be all of these things for, you know, just for myself alone, let alone for anyone else? So. Yeah. You know, that's, that is definitely, I just came out of um, a, a, like a three or four week period of running on fumes. And so I... I know absolutely when you're running on fumes and you are trying to meet all the um, appointments and obligations and responsibilities and even the things you think you said yes to because they sounded fun at the time you said yes. When you're running on fumes, nothing is good. Nothing (laughs) is fun. Am I right? Right. Right. No, I mean, I'm I'm working just to stay in in the middle. Right. I can't say that I'm having – I mean, there are some some – I'm getting having a few laughs here and there because I have a good sense of humor. Thank God. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and I, I thought, well, gee, you know, I haven't been to the gym. I haven't been doing my meditation. I haven't been, you know, haven't, haven't, haven't stretching the, the injured shoulder, all these things that, you know, because of, you know, I could blame life logistics and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, I come on this show and whine a lot. No, you <laughs> don't. Do. You're, you're good. You're good. Uh, you're I, but I purposefully bring up honest stuff. I so, so that, appreciate you that. You know, we can talk about how there are other people. I'm not the only person. Who's I, you're not the only person. I had a Charlie co- Brown in the world. You're yeah. not a Charlie Brown. Oh, my God. You're not a tar- Charlie Brown. <laughs> Maybe a peppermint patty, but not a Charlie Brown. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chuck. Okay. But the thing is, is you when you bring up these things, Todd, everybody's going through these things. And I had a client that I was working with yesterday who, while we were doing this work, she came in in tears because everything in her life had just seemingly, seemingly fallen apart. And as we were doing work together, the thing that was coming up, we were doing visioning, which is a process we'll talk about in a few minutes as well for helping to set intention. Um, We were doing visioning, and the thing that came up often during that course of visioning was self-love, self-love, and service, being of service. Those were the things that were important to her. And what we found out is she was lacking self-love. So therefore, when she was being of service out in the world, she was getting um, irritated, Mm -hmm. (laughs) to put it mildly. You know, she was getting kind of, it wasn't, it wasn't, the being out, being in service wasn't fulfilling her because a number one first thing always that we talk about on living your inspired life is you start with yourself Mm -hmm. and so i'm always reminded when i do work with people that of the thing that i need to do most me susan personally and that is is to take care of myself to nurture myself to love myself and to and to begin and to really think about what are the things that i can do for myself that uh will help me feel like I'm loved and and guide me to activities where I feel loved you know and you and what you were just talking about about exercising and and uh, meditation meditation and whatever it is yoga or and eating right and things like that I am eating right okay (laughs) I could tell because you have energy but uh those are the things that we often um throw out the window when we are feeling overwhelmed And when we're feeling rushed and hurried and harried and um, caught in that obligation wheel that you can't get off of. So being intentional means also to me being mindful. Watching when you're about to um, uh, go off (laughs) into the outer sphere because of something that's triggered you. Okay. We had a, a family therapy meeting the other day. 
and uh, we it, we sat there and we, and I talked about my daughter to the therapist and I said you know I really feel like we <laughs> spend a lot of time yelling at her and maybe she doesn't feel the compassion and the love that's behind it and I know that for myself and, you know and we talked about strategies of, you know making sure she feels yeah. loved and all this stuff we got home <laughs> it's not it's not funny but I <laughs> lost it she. She did something, and I did something I rarely do. I yelled at her for about five minutes straight, just screaming at her because I was so frustrated. Really? This after I said at the therapist's office that I, you know, she needs to feel more love. You know, I know. So doesn't that happen often for people? I know that that when the it's when, almost like I took the lid off. Right. Of, gave myself permission to express frustration in a big way. Right, and then eventually that'll that'll simmer down. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But it, it's almost like the thing that we think, okay, so here's what I'm hearing, is is that um, this, is a, this is like a catch-22 sometimes. Because when we are focusing on the thing that we want to do so that we can feel better or treat other people better or be better in the world, oftentimes what happens in the process of that, of, of refining that, is the, and that's what um, this uh, quote about that Diane Harmony, I, I said earlier, about the, the, the ego seems to put up perceived barriers in our way. So what happens is on the way, it, on the way to getting better, right, on the way to being a better person or dealing with your daughter in a better way or whatever, coming up with the strategies, there is still this other side that needs to be addressed until it no longer catches you, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And, and, and so oftentimes, I, I know this is so for me, I'll say I'm, you know, I'm doing work, you know, my inner work, and just so I can be a better person. And I swear, as soon as I leave the house, somebody will do something, and I want to just <laughs> take them out, you know? I want to knock them down. And so really all that is is the opportunity. Okay, so what that is is claiming this is how I want I choose to be. That's an intention, right? I choose to interact this way. And until it becomes a habit, we will default to the old behavior. We will default to the frustration level. We will default to the anger level or the depression level until we, um, like you said earlier, you're doing your work to stay in the middle, until we find that middle ground where we can be there more easily. So it's just retraining. You know, it's cr- it's creating a, a new habit, which takes 21 days mm. to do. Mm-hmm. So, um, s- well, I've also heard this idea that when we set an intention, like say uh, patience, I'm I'm patient. I'm going to be patient today, all day long. That the universe sort of lines up things to test, test not to you. test us, but to give us the opportunity to be patient. Mm-hmm. So the bank line is going to be three times as long. Mm-hmm. And uh, you get stuck in traffic, and somebody swears at you. That's and, true. You know, I don't know. That's true. It is. It's so that you can practice. I also <laughs> think it's so that we can go, okay, is that really what I want? You know, there's another thing. Is this really what I, do I really want? You know, because some people will say, okay, I'm going to set the intention to. Um, Be a beep. Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> and then everything will go well. Oh, you know, maybe we need to think of it that way. Do it the opposite. No, but some no. people have set the intention that I'm going to have this job where I make, you know, this kind of money. I'm going to take this job so I can make this kind of money. And then what happens is they get into the job and they go, oh, I don't like this job. But I have set the intention to make this kind of money. And sometimes it's like setting intentions can also be where you go, okay, you know what? That's not what re- re- I really want. So it's almost like peeling the onion layer, too. You know, I want to be joyful. But you know what? Really what I want more than anything is to be patient Mm -hmm. do you know or something Mm -hmm. like that so so yes it's it's the universe brings us stuff so that we can practice the thing that we've said we want to be intentional about and it also gives us opportunity to re-choose to uh, to realign oh you know i thought what i really wanted was to be happy but really what i want is to love myself that's really because if i really love myself then i'm going to be happy you know those kinds of things so um, it, it's a, it's a, uh, it, it is kind of a fine tuning when we set intention. Walt Disney 
um, years ago was quoted on saying, first you, ha- you have to dream, and you have to dream big, and then you have to believe in your dream. You don't have to get anybody else to believe it. You believe in your dream. And then you have to dare to live that dream. And once you can dream, believe, and dare, then you go out and do it. And you can do it. So when in um, talking about setting intentions and, and how do we want to close out this year, what is it and how do we want to start next year or, 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 or the next chapter of our life? You know, maybe it's not just about the year ending. What's, how do I want to start the next chapter of my life or how do I want to start this new job? How do I, what is the intention I want to seed into this new thing I'm about to experience? And so follow Walt Disney's sage advice. I mean, man. Mm-hmm. The man really had it wired. Wow. You dream as big as you possibly can, and then you begin to believe in your dream as much as you can for as long as you can, and then you you dare to to know that that dream that you're believing in is going to happen. It's going to manifest, and you go out and you do the things that support that dream in actually coming to fruition. So the the dreaming is what the dreaming is what plants the seed in the soil of your garden, right? And then the, the believing is what waters it you, when you can't see it growing. I believe, I believe, I believe. Just like in Miracle on 34th Street. I believe, I believe. <laughs> and then you dare to watch your dream begin to take root and begin to come up through the soil. And you do, during all of that, you do the things you need to do to take care of that so that that dream can actually become the reality that you're desiring, the reality that you're intending for your life. And I would say to everyone out there that, you, that the ma- a major intention to pr- plant is that thing of self-love. And because underneath all of everything, underneath your money issues, your relationship issues, even your health issues, the thing that nine times out of 10 is causing the issue is that we're not loving ourselves enough. Mm. Not out of selfishness, not out of taking somebody else's toy or anything, but out of um, whatever life circumstances have battered us down or whatever family situation we grew up believing in was so or whatever outer life experience we had that, that damaged our esteem. But when we can focus and set intention to love ourselves, I love myself. I love myself more than I ever have. If we can make that the intention, then everything else will begin to blossom because you've just now, <laughs> you've just now fertilized everything with love. You know, because really, love is the thing that heals everything. Love is the thing that takes all, that takes the um, blinders off our eyes. Okay, now this is getting kind of woo, I guess, but uh, it it is the thing when we are intentional that will open up that infinite field of possibility that we have not been able to see yet and when we can do that then we're at choice on how we want to live our life does that make sense yeah and i don't think there's anything woo about it and i think you of all people are an expert in this field you've gone through personal things this year in the last couple of years yeah you know and for you to be able to say that yeah you know i i applaud you oh well thank you it's yeah I mean, I, I say that because I know you've mentioned on air. Some yeah, of, and some and of your I stuff, and so. I'm I do attest. We um, this group I'm working with. We were talking about stamina, and endurance, and um, uh, this one friend was saying, "God, en- endurance just means like it's going to go on forever and ever, and it's never going to get over." And I'm in limbo, and you know, and things like that. And another woman said, "Wow, endurance is the root of endurance." Uh, okay, I now I can't remember all of what she said. Means that uh, endurance references rock. Mm. Endurance is a rock. Uh, it's a Greek derivative of something. And she said, so when you think about a rock, a rock is just always there, and a rock doesn't react to what's happening to it. it doesn't get upset that it's getting rained on or or sun is on it somebody or, steps on or it. somebody steps on it <laughs> or a bird does something to it a rock doesn't get upset about that a rock just is and 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 because it's okay with just being in that time frame that maybe it's just a really slow time frame 
So everything just kind of passes by. And that kind of twisted my brain around to think of endurance as um, not enduring a, a bad thing, but being solid as a rock, being as solid as I can be in whatever experience it is that I'm having, good or horrible. And that, so then that brings me back to this place of having your grounding in really loving yourself, knowing that no matter what, I love myself, no matter what, I'm going to be okay, no matter what, I'm not alone in this universe. You know, I am, I am informed and I am creative because there is this inner wisdom that is always with me. So no matter what, even when I think I cannot make a choice or, or life is horrible, no matter what, I can uh, just endure it from the POV of a rock. I, I love that. Is that weird? I love it. No, I love it. Because when I said step on the rock, I thought, well, the rock is there to support. Yes. <gasps> you know? Yes. So it's getting rained on. It's getting stepped on. And it doesn't, of course, I'm uh, I'm projecting all this onto the rock. Right. But, but it doesn't have any opinion. It's like, okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, and that makes a difference on how you, I, for me, it, it in that conversation, it made a difference on how I was going to look at uh, my current si situation, which seems, which feels like I'm in limbo, you know, which feels like I'm, I'm moving forward, but I'm not, or I'm not moving forward, but I am, you know, where I can't see any of that. So just to notice that I'm, that enduring means that I'm just being a rock right now, just being a rock. Mm. So anyway, we're going to take a short break. This is Living Your Inspired Life on News Talk 1590 KBTA. We're going to be right back. And welcome back to Living Your Inspired Life. I'm Susan Borella, and in the studio with me today is Todd Waddington. Hello. Hello. We're talking about intentions, and then we got into talking about self-love, and then we got into whole bunch of mishigashi. It was very good. It was like, wow, I'm really glad I came to the studio <laughs> today. <laughs> well, I always feel that way. I want to read another quote um, because I, what I want to do is also then talk about visioning, which we have on our inspiration page on the website, livingyourinspiredlife.org. And you can go there and download or print out um, some of the kind of homework things that we have there. Um, but I want to read this quote because I think it kind of leads into it. Um, this is a quote by one of my uh, mystic mentors, Ernest Holmes, and he says, You rob no one when you discover your own good. You limit no person when you express a greater degree of livingness. You harm no one by being happy. You steal from no one by being prosperous. You hinder no person's evolution when you consciously enter into the kingdom of your own good and possess it today. Your endeavor is not to locate the divine presence or awaken the activity of the law. It is rather to become aware of this presence and of its activity flowing through you. So that kind of spoke to me about what we were talking about earlier about, you know, really grounding ourselves in self-love. And then we, we realize that there's no one and there's no thing against us. There's no mm -hmm. precipice we're on. There's no you know, bad thing that's going to befall us. And then we can be active in the creative process of life and really open up to that, that flow, that thing. Because I really believe we're creative beings. I really do. We're here to create. I mean, we, we are. I mean, we, we're creating yeah, right whether now. It's we're a creating good thing a conversation. Or not a good thing. We're creating children. We're mm -hmm. creating chaos. Mm-hmm. Isn't it interesting? And and sometimes <laughs> it's the same thing. And sometimes it's the same thing. And it's interesting because I think a lot of, uh, certainly not necessarily people I uh, am in circles with, but um, I think a lot of people think that just getting by day to day is as good as it gets. And, and they f have forgotten at some point that there are, that you can have fun in your daily life. You don't have to wait for the weekend, you know, this mm -hmm. TGIF thing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be TGIF. Well, I think many people still operate on the paradigm of I've got to work for 30 years and retire, and that mm. doesn't work anymore. No, it doesn't work. You know, we, we people are laid off after five years. Some people, and most of us, don't want to do the same thing for more than a decade. No, I know? was talking to somebody, uh, in fact, another client that came to me um, the other day and um, this person was very upset because 
she had just been laid off of her last like six jobs she shared with me. I'm like, wow, I, well, that's interesting. I, I, I wonder what we're going to find out about that. And during the course of the discussion, she shared with me that she set an intention. Are you get? Do you get this? She sent in, set an intention to move from one state to California. And within three weeks, she got laid off of her job. Wow. Uh, <laughs> so is that a reflection of her work ethic? No, she was fine. She just got laid off. You know, she didn't get fired. And, and this is why intentions are very powerful when you really get behind them because it will drive you to the thing you want. Now, she ended up in a different part of California than she wanted to go to, but then she was working a job and she got laid off of that job. <laughs> and now she's going to Northern California, which is closer to where she wants to be, the the place in California she wants to be. And uh, and I'm like, and it's, <laughs> she was so upset about being laid off. And I'm like, are you seeing how you you made the the um, little lily pads across the, the, the river to get to the place you want, and you've just stepped on three of them to get there, and you're almost there. And she went, oh, my God, I didn't see it that way. Oh. I said, so who's to say that this next place you're going to and whatever next gig you get isn't the next thing you're supposed to do so that you can get to the final destination that you've always wanted to be in? You know, So, so intentions, when they, when they happen, are very powerful. And... Then we have to, like we were talking earlier about um, setting the intention for joy and then you spin off into the outer sphere because your daughter didn't do her homework thing. That's what I'm talking about, about holding those intentions kind of loosely because um, this, this client of mine, she only saw that she got laid off. And then, she, and then after the fact, she went, well, I guess I could go to California then. And then it took her, it wasn't until she was working with me that she went, oh, I set the intention to go to California. And that happened before I got laid off the, you know, however umpteen times before, you know. And ev one thing leads to another. So it's almost like that missile guidance system, you know, on a torpedo or whatever. You, they have, you have to go, you, you don't have to go off course, but you go slightly off course to re-correct to get you to your final destination, your final state of being and and sometimes that's absolutely the most appropriate way to do it yeah. i do think though that the more specific we are with our intentions not to kind of control everything but what is it that we absolutely want it, it kind of lines up better i have an example of that that i was working on an act once i, I back in my one-man show days and uh and i thought well you know what would be really fun to be on the ellen degeneres show by and i set a date so <laughs> My parents came to visit, and I don't remember who bought the tickets or how it happened, but we went to the Ellen DeGeneres show. Oh, and my I realized, God. oh, ah. I wasn't specific about wanting to be on the Ellen DeGeneres <laughs> show. Not just at. But it happened. That I, wow. I, mean, I had no intention to go to the Ellen DeGeneres show, but I ended up being there. And it was like, oh, I'm not performing, but I'm here. And I realized that after I got home, I was like, Oh, that was that intention I set. Aha. Uh -huh. Getting more specific so, certainly helps. Yeah. 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 And the, the only way we can re refine that stuff is by just living our life after we've set the intention and, and, and being mindful. Going, oh, yeah, right. that's what I said. <clears throat> that's what I said. So one of the things I want to talk about, and Todd, you can help me out here, is um, on the website on livingyourinspiredlife.org, we have, I have a, um, something that's called visioning and this was developed by Dr. Michael Beckwith and it's about asking questions within yourself uh, and then listening for the answers however they show up so that you can again um, instead of mentally trying to figure out your life you can listen to that um, divine urge within you that thing within you that really is kind of the reason why you're here that maybe you've forgotten to listen to from the, when you were a little kid or maybe your life has changed so much that that inner voice is saying okay now you're going to do this now do this um, so visioning is a series of questions that you ask yourself so um, do you have a visioning journal Todd I have yes you actually you gave it to me i did okay cool <laughs> how awesome so because i have one and and um and i like to to when i vision and i vision okay so i vision maybe thank you by the way you're welcome sweetheart <laughs> uh 
I vision like weekly. And, and it's something that I'll forget to do. I'll go a couple of few weeks and then li- life gets a little disoriented oriented for me. And then I'm like, oh, you know what? I need to sit down and vision again about what's, what's the next thing up for me, whatever it is. And I, and I like to have it in a journal so that it's all in one place because then I can track back. Again, like you were saying about, oh, yeah, I set that inten- intention to go to the Ellen Generous show instead of be on. I can track back and go, okay, here's here's the breadcrumbs that have got me here. Oh, wait, a quick interjection. So mm-hmm. I in the beginning of the show, they do that warm-up stuff. Yeah. Because I, the intention was to be on the show. They do the warm-up stuff. The comedian called me down, and I did some ridiculous— you, The biggest piece you forgot to share with the us. The ridiculous, like, dancing in front of the camera to get the audience warmed up because uh-huh. I thought— I'm pulling out all the stops, so I just you acted completely ridiculous in front of the whole audience. So, in a sense, you know, it, you was, were it didn't make it on air, but I was oh on the show. Oh my God, Todd Waddington, yeah, you so cracked that, me up. I forgot to mention that piece. Now, did you vision before you did that? <laughs> oh, I know. Anyway, I'm sorry. I uh, no, you, you crack me up. That's so hysterical. <laughs> How many people out there are are have done the thing they said they wanted to do? It just looks slightly different. I'm, I'm sure that's everybody. Right. Everybody's like, right. oh, I, oh, I did that thing I said I was going to do. It just was different. So you were saying we, we sometimes take many steps to get to that place. Right, right. So here's in, in um, intentionally closing out this year and, and being mindful of, of how we want to start the next year. Um, visioning could be really useful. In fact, um, I just did this work with uh, another client yesterday, and um, it was something that she had not done it this way before, and it gave us so much information that we then plugged into a mind map, which is also on the inspiration page, um, to then see how to focus these qualities that were showing up in the visioning. So visioning is, isn't about figuring out things. It's not um, visualization. It's not um, uh, seeing st- what you want. It's about asking a, a series of questions and being as still as you can within yourself to let whatever comes up, comes up. And, and the reason why it's important to write this stuff down is because then when you're done with the process, you will see that there's a pattern within it. You will see that different things come up. And and things can come up in answer to these questions, like, you know, it could be colors. Um, some people see a picture or just some words or um, or uh, or get nothing. You know, I've, mm-hmm. I've visioned with people, and they're like, I, I didn't get anything. I don't know why. And that's okay, too, because it's just a place of being um, as still as you can be so that you can listen to the inner wisdom within you that already knows and already holds all your answers and solutions and it also holds all the seeds for all the dreams that you've ever dreamed and you haven't acted on and you've forgotten so the the visioning questions are i think there's five of them it goes like this you want to ask what is the highest um vision for my life if you're visioning on uh, say your life in the upcoming year you you want to ask what's the highest vision because you don't want to you want to in asking it that way the question that way it opens up that field of possibility so that your ego isn't going yeah you can't ask for something like that you just you're asking your inner knowing what's the highest vision for my life and then just sit and let whatever comes up come up and right, and it, it can be a color. It doesn't have to. It can be something abstract, or it can be something very specific. Too. It, it's fascinating what happens, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, then the second question is, what do I what what do I need to embrace for this vision to occur in my life, or to be made manifest, or to to become a reality in my life? What do I need to embrace? And that question, hopefully, is evoking um, some possible qualities or ideas, maybe something you've never done before that you need to really start kind of embracing by just even considering it, you know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there'll be qualities that come up. And and by qualities, I mean, I need to embrace self love or, um, or like this one client, her the quality that came up was service. Uh, I don't know what it came up for her and for me about her, we were visioning about her. So you can do this with friends too. You know, you can get a group of friends together and say, okay, let's vision for our lives and to t- focus on one person. So like five of us will sit in a circle and say, okay, we're going to vision for Todd's life. 
<laughs> Wouldn't that I'm be all fun? for it. Let's do it. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> and then, but what's in, what's fascinating is people will come up with similar answers, and then you begin to see that it's not just you thinking, oh well, you know, I'm supposed to be doing this thing that I. I think I, you know, it would make me too big for my pants. But if other people come up with it, then you're like, oh, I need to focus on that, you know? So then the third question that you ask is, what is it I need to release? And that means, uh, you know. It's not what you're thinking. <laughs> it's not what we're releasing is not what you're thinking. Because, <laughs> because either, lots of people come up with, oh, I need to release fear of, of doing the thing I say I want. But sometimes people find that what they need to release is more love. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Or more, or or more uh, power, their personal power. You know, which means just being more of themselves in life. So, what is it I need to release? And then the next question is, what do I need to embody or become? What do I need to embody or become? And that means that really, what am I get, what am I willing to really commit to being? What and 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 again, you're not figuring it out. You don't. Please don't try and stress and and come up with an answer. Just sit quietly and let the answer bubble up, and it will be better than you could ever imagine. So, what is it I need to embody or become? And then um, and then there's another question that I've been working with, and it it is, what are the gifts? that I bring? What are the gifts that I bring? Um, and that's informative because oftentimes um, people will write down things that, oh, I didn't realize that was a gift I had, you know, telling somebody off, that's a gift. But sometimes it is <laughs> because it references that you have inner strength and courage. So what are the gifts that I bring? And then the last question is you just simply sit and ask, is there anything else I need to know? Is there anything else I need to know? Now you're writing all this down. And what happens after the process, you can look back and you can see, you'll begin to see where there's a trail leading to what it is that is your highest best for your life. It's, and when you do it consistently, like on a weekly basis and keep it in a journal, the stuff that comes up begins to track really well. And it, it's, this is such a great thing. I love this process. Mm -hmm. It sounded kind of weird to me when I first did it and I like didn't get it. But when, when you start the process, if you take a few minutes just to breathe and kind of um, do, go into a meditative state if you can, and if you haven't meditated, just breathe, do some deep breaths, and then ask the questions, it, you, 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 you're clarifying your mind when you take all those deep breaths. And you're also preparing yourself if you, are, if you do a, a short um, meditation of just being silent. And then what happens is after all of that, um, it keeps percolating even though you're not visioning. I notice, you know, for like about 24 hours or even a week later, there'll be something else that comes up and it, it'll pop in my mind and I'm like, oh, that's what, that's why I got the color green and that, that's mm -hmm. what it was, you know, or whatever, those random things. So when you vision, don't judge what's coming up. Don't um, try and uh, micromanage it or squeeze it to death. Just be open and available because what you're creating is, um, in essence, that fertile soil that you can plant the seed of your desire in and know absolutely that it's going to be uh, rooted and become uh, whatever that is that you've been dreaming of. Again, Walt Disney said, you got to dream big. You got to believe in that dream. You got to dare to believe and do it. And then you get up and do it. So that's visioning, and it's on the it's on the website livingyourinspiredlife.org. and um, yeah. I would say that um, to yeah. add to that, that that visioning is a great process to do before visualization. Visualization is very powerful. Oh yeah, yeah. But I think just saying I want to be on the Ellen DeGeneres show di didn't have as much power as if I had sat down and really done this process, and then. I get whatever information I get, and then when it gets strong enough, mm -hmm. then that's when we can visualize and say, okay, it's a radio show. It's a radio show where I talk about principles and how to live your most inspired life. And I'm sure yeah. you did something oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know. Of course we did. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, I, think, I thank you for bringing that up because um, what happens is when we tap in to 
into into ourselves, into that intuitive, that inner divine guidance, if you will, um, at, which is what visioning does, then our authentic our authentic life. I'm losing my words right now. Uh, begins to grow and come out. We live authentically. So many people I know are talking about, I want to be authentic. Well, you know what? Sit down, do this visioning, <laughs> and then be it. But oftentimes what people do is they stick in their head. They stay in their brain. They're in their mind trying to figure it out, and they're, they're, they're messing around with themselves up there, running around like a rat in a cage, mm -hmm. trying to find the best way that trying to find the best way to figure out how they need to be in the world and what they're going to do about it. And, and what happens is most time when pe most of the time I've noticed when people do it that way, they continue to be unhappy, unfulfilled, and they ain't got so much money in the bank. Mm. I, I really think it's true. And part of that, too, is that I do believe we have entered into um, a new paradigm on planet Earth with humanity that isn't about... Uh, you need the mental stuff. You do. You need that linear thinking. You need the, the planning and the organizing and all of that. But instead of going from the head first, it's about us coming from the heart first. And when we come from the heart first, then we're only love. And that love, again, informs us and leads us to better experiences than if we were trying to figure it out with our engineer brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I work, I don't know, this is really tangential, but I, I think maybe, but I work with kids and I'm noticing that w as, as we work with newer and newer groups, younger kids, they're the distraction level, they can't pay attention, the, you know, it's like ADD out the wazoo. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't help but think that what, we, what looks on the surface to be a real problem maybe they may be fixing they may be like just totally aligned with whatever's happening 50 to 75 years from now and it's all their brain their little brains are just going to click into this high technology that we don't even know how to you know i'm like how do i work the iphone right and, you know and then they just grab it and they can you know I agree with you. I think that that is what's so happening. I'm sorry. I, I felt no, like see, it was related to what you is. were saying, but it is because um because when people look at those kinds of kids from a from a let's analyze them and figure them out so we can fix right, them. Right, that's it. They're, that's what I was saying. That they're not into that they're, same mindset right. at all. And and they're not. And they and those kids are actually. And this goes back to what we were saying earlier in the show. The thing that seems to be the challenge can often be our greatest um, uh, barometer of what it is we really need to practice, what it is we really need to do. So, you know, those kids feel like and look like a challenge to, to people. And yet, I think you're right, Todd. I think they're, they could be the visionaries of our new world. They're yeah. certainly going to be the uh, caretakers of it in, in several years, yeah? <laughs> Either that or it's, it's, it's a crazy and nihilistic <laughs> I choose not to believe happen. it. Not a word of truth in that. Uh, uh, uh. This is living your inspired life, right? <laughs> so, Todd, thank you so much for being here and 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 chatting with me and uh, my pleasure and sharing Good stuff. Good to be here. Yeah, I love it when you're here. I, I I can't wait for the next time. So, this is Susan Burrell. You've been listening to Living Your Inspired Life. If you've missed anything, go to the website. In fact, go to the website, click on Inspiration, and do some of the homework. You will find yourself absolutely feeling better. So until next time, I'm going to say, and so it is, namaste.